יאללה. תודה קדוש בוקר טוב, מסכת יבמות פ"ב עמוד א', it says here in the Gemara that Rabbi Yehuda le'ta'amel, which means Rabbi Yehuda is going according to his reasoning, that he holds the min b'mino, that means if you have the same species that gets mixed up, lo batel, it's not going to become batel. And therefore, according to this shita, according to Rabbi Yehuda that he says this, the entire bitul of Yisurim is only if it's going to be in different species getting mixed together. But if it's going to be the same species getting mixed together, it's not going to be batel. So says the Gimana, if you remember, this is talking about the chatichot, you remember the chatichah, the, the pieces of meat of basar, the mixed up, where we were talking about also the, the, this is one of the things that we were talking about yesterday. Okay, now we're going to continue and it says like this. Aval, lo nimoach, but if this basar chatat, right, which means you had a piece of meat of a chatat animal, right, which means of a sin offering, that is offered in the Beit HaMikdash, and it became tameh, and it was not nimoach, which means not nimoach means it would, did not become, um, I would say the word is, it would not become, uh, um, <coughs> nimoach is like, you know, when it, when it starts disintegrating, when it starts becoming, uh, um, uh, I don't know a better word for it now, Right? If it's going, not going to be nimuach, it means that it still stayed in the same present form as what it is. Okay? So my, what is the halacha? Can we say that it's going to be batel or not batel? So says the Gemara, it should not become batel. Right? Why? So now one second. What did we say before? If you remember, we went and we said yesterday, that if you have a basar of chatat tehorah that gets mixed up with mea chatichot of chulin tehorot, according to everybody, it's not going to become batel. So he says, so nitno v'nitne v'gidah. So why don't we make a differentiation in the actual piece in itself and say, bamed v'nimuri, one of these words, v'nimocha, only if it started disintegrating and therefore it's not recognizable, it's not a piece anymore, it's not something chashu. Aval, however though, if it was not going to be disintegrated, meaning that it's still intact, it's a piece of meat intact, it should not become batel. So therefore, why do we come and we only need a differentiation between chatat tehoda and chulin? One more time, chatat tehoda and chulin. Chulin means mundane, not holy. Stam, this piece of meat of a chatat animal with a hundred pieces of meat from uh, the store. Yeah, that's called chulin. There we said it's not going to be batel, but we said that if it's going to be one chasar, basar chatat teme'a with basar chatat tehola, it would be batel, okay? So why don't we just say that it all depends. Even the basar chatat teme'a, it all depends if it's going to be nimoach or not nimoach. If it's nimocha, you could say it's going to be batel. If it's not going to be nimocha, you're not going to say it's batel. So answers the Gemara, tehorot b'tehorot adifle. You're right. We could have learned this chidush, but it's much better to learn the chidush, something tahor, getting mixed up with something tahor. The Tanakama is going to be machmid also in that, even though the bitul is easier. Meaning, when you have chatat tehora, meaning you have a basar, chatat tehora, basar, meat of a chatat, which is pure, getting mixed with chulin, which is pure. So it's tahor with tahor. There, it was a bigger chidush to teach us that case than to teach, teach us the case that we just mentioned now when it was basar chatat me'ah, but it's not nimoah. Why? Because tahor betahor was better to teach us even though the, the bitul is lighter, but at the end of the day, everything is tahor. But still, it was much a bigger chidush to teach us that it's still not going to be but So says the Gemara, but according to the Shakish, that he says that we're talking about Basar Shemimocha. So if it's Basar Shemimocha, it's not Chashu. Remember, when is something Chashu? When it's a piece. Imagine right now, right, I'm going to bring you a cholent. Yeah? When do you see it's Chashu? When you see big pieces of meat. But what happens when I bring you a cholent and you only see fat? What do you tell me? Eh, this is not, uh, this is low quality. Or I'm going to come and I'm going to show you a cholent where there's meat but you can't even see the meat. Why? Because it all broke apart inside of the, 
of the cholent. So you're looking, and you don't, so you're going to tell me that's the Chasuv. It's not the Chasuv, right? The, the, you can't even see the meat. You can't see the meat. The meat is the ikara only when it's the Chasuv, when it's a piece. But if it was Nimoak, even though it was there, there's nothing Chasuv there. So says the Gemara, according to Rasha Kish, that he says it's Batash Nimocha, and therefore there's no Chasuvut in this piece. Maishna Reisha, Maishna Seifa. What's the difference then between the first case, the Reisha and the Seifa? Why is it the Basad is not going to be, right? Mit Batel, also the Seifa, or also, right, is only going to be a sin what? It's going to be a small loss. So Amara Shisha Bereder Avivi says of Shisha Bereder Avivi, Reisha, the Tumat Mashkim, the Rabbanan. The Seifa Midoraita. The first part of the Braita, we're talking about the Basar Chatat Tameh, got mixed up with Basar Chatat Tahor, is talking about the Basar Chatat Shenitma was only Tameh Midrabbanan, the Tumat Mashkin. And therefore he was more lenient, and therefore he said that even Mimimino is Bateh. The Seifa is talking about where it became Tameh Midoraita, not with the Mashkin, it became Tameh Midoraita. So therefore, since it's the Raita, Tarakamas Modet Rabbi Yehuda, the Min Bemino, is not Batel. Even in something that they don't sell it, usually in numbers. Everyone understood the difference, meaning that there's Tumad Raita and Tumad Rabbanan. Tumad Raita, for example, let's say you have, whether it's going to be a Zav, right, or the Shmona Shratzin, or you have all these different Tumot touching the meat, touching the food. The food could become Arishon. Okay, and therefore what happens is, is that the, the, the Tum'ah will be Doraita. Remember that food could become a Nishon and it could become even a Sheni. What could become Shlishi and what could become Ravi, please? I'll put you guys on. So here, what we're talking about now is, is that the Gemara says that there's going to be a difference between Tum'ah Doraita and Tum'ah Drabanan. So Tum'ah Mashkin would only make it Tum'ah Drabanan, not Tum'ah. Doraita. So ask the Gemara Aval to Matcheretz. But what about to Matcheretz? To Matcheretz is Doraita. It's not Mashkin, which is the Rabbanan. My what's the Allah according to Tanakama? Lota, are you going to tell me that it's not going to be Batel? At the Tani Seifa, when it says in the Seifa, Aval Chaticha, Shem Chatat Torah, Shem Tarab, Mea Chaticha, Shem Kuin Torah. When you have a Chatat, a Chatat Tehora with Chulin Tehorot. Remember, nothing's Tameh here. Everything is Tahor. Chatat Tehora. It should not be batel. Why don't we say that we should make a differentiation in that case as well? But it's not. Tumat Sheretz is Doraita, it's not Rabbanan. So therefore there we should have said that if it was Bemet Tumat Sheretz, it wouldn't have been Ta'ale. It wouldn't have been batel. Okay, only if it was going to be Tumat Mashki. And so the Gemara, in Achanami, Teorot, the Torah, the Torot, or the The Tana was better to teach us the Chidush, right? That something which is Tahor that gets mixed up with the Dvarim Teorim is a bigger Chidush. Which means you're right, it could have made such a differentiation between the Tumad Oraita, Tumad Rabbanan. But it still wanted to give us a bigger Chidush of Tahor, the Tahor. Okay? Fine. Rabba Amar. Rabba comes and he's going to give another explanation according to Shitat, the Shakish. And he says, Reisha Isur Lav. Seifa Isur Karet. What does that mean? The, in the Reisha, we're talking about eating kochim betum'ah. That, right, you're talking about an Isur Lav. It's a negative commandment. Then therefore, the Tanakama was lenient. The Seifa is talking about maybe a Zar is eating kochim. If a Zar is eating kochim, there you have a problem of an Isur of Karet. It's something much different than the Isur of Allah. Okay, which means because if a person comes and he's going to eat when he's Tameh, but he's a Kohen, so then it just said, Hanefesh Shetach Otochal Lav Nechuli Bechuleh. Right, he comes and he says, there it could be just a Lav. Okay? But here it's going to be much more of an Isur of Karet. It's much worse. Okay? So says the Gemara, one second. This is Rabbah himself. Now, Rabba is trying to answer this in the Shita of the Shakish. Now, one second. We have to understand that. 
if Rabbi himself is answering this in Shitat Rashakish, <coughs> according to Shitat Rabbi, he comes and he says that anything which is Mina Torah, the second that it's Mina Torah, there's no difference whether it's, it's a lav or whether it's a karet. Meaning, it's from the Torah. What do I care now what the punishment is? If the punishment is going to be an Isu lav or the punishment is going to be Isu karet. The second that I'm going to say Mina Torah, so pasuk. I don't have to know now what in the Torah. So what are you making a differentiation that in the late Shah the Tanakhama is going to be Mikkel because it's your Sulab and in the Seifa is going to be Mahamid with the Sul Karet. The second that I say it's Torah, it's a Kaddish. That's it. I don't care whether it's a love or it's a, or it's a Karet. We have to be Mahamid. So answer the Gemara. You're right. Kashya. It's a very good question. We don't have an answer on this. Okay. Ravashi Yaman. Ravashi is going to bring another answer on, according to and he says like this: Seifa mishum davar le davar sheish lo matirin, bechol davar sheish lo matirin, afilu beelak lo matir. He says the reisha is talking about the seifa. Sorry, is talking about. Remember, what was the seifa? The seifa was basar chatat tahor, right? With chulin teorot, everything tahor. There we said we're talking about something which is davar sheish lo matirin, right? Which means that it's not always going to be prohibited. You could eat it without bitul. And anything which is davar sheish lo matirim, so afilu be'elef lo batir. Even with elef is lo batir. I'll give you an example, because you guys like a lot of the examples. Okay? Something like chadash. You guys know what chadash is? You're going to have a case where if you remember Rabbi, Rabbi Mansur spoke about it in our Bet Knesset, if you remember the concept of chadash, some people they make a joke out of it. Say, ah, big deal. You know, my, my bread is not, uh, my bread is not Yoshan. What's a big deal? You understand? So if you remember, he spoke about it. It's exact same love, just like Chazid, right? Just like pig, right? There's no, you understand? There's no, there's no difference between pig and Chadash. It's exact same love from the Torah, right? It's a negative commandment. Okay, so now what happens is like this. What is the Kavanah? We have bread, right, that was, uh, that comes from wheat. The wheat was harvested, right, before, or at least it was planted and it had to take root before Pesach. So as long as it planted and it took root before Pesach, there's no problem. Yeah? Okay, fine. What happens if it came after Pesach? So for example, they're going to have new wheat. The wheat is planted after Pesach and then harvested. It comes August and September and then all until the next Pesach and then you have a problem. Is it Chadash or is it Yashan? So now, okay, let's say if there's going to be such a thing as a doubt, right? But not always is there a doubt. At the end of the day, right, sometimes there's no doubt. You know about it, right? Nowadays, they have all the information. They know exactly what's going on. They call up the companies. The companies know what type of wheat they're using. Perfect. So there's no doubts. You know exactly what they're using. So now you want to come and you want to say like this. You want to say, let's say I had flour, yeah, and I was making, right, I had two different batches of flour. One of them was an all-purpose flour at Publix, right, or gold medal that had from Kansas City, from KC. So it was Yashan. And the other flour was Chadash flour, right? And I come and I start making breads. Now, the thing is that when I make Chala, I took the two different doughs, or let's say I took 10 different batches, and we were making a huge thing for a Shabbat Chadan. And all of a sudden, what happens is, is that I come and I make all the breads. And all of a sudden, afterwards, they come and ask you one second, what type of uh, flour did you use? What type of dough did you use? And you say, okay, and you show the packages. I say, this is Chadash, and this is the Ashan. So you're going to come, and you're going to be a Chacham. You're going to tell me, okay, fine, but it's Batel. Why is it Batel? Because let's say you had double of the Yashan and the Chadash. Yeah, and then dry, you have to Batel. So you had double. Or even 10 times a mile, whatever you want. Even if you only had one bread of Chadash that gets mixed up with the Yashan. Yeah? So you should say it's Batel. Says the Gemara, there's a general rule. This is in a lot of different halachot. Whether it happens, something that gets that you want to be Batel on Shabbat, that you could eat on Motzei Shabbat. Something that was Batel on Yom Tov, that you could eat on Motzei Yom Tov. Davar sheyesh lo What does it mean, Davar sheyesh lo Right now, why do you want to eat it? Because you want to annul it, right? It's right. You want to annul it. You want to do bitul, and through the bitul, you want to eat. If you don't do bitul, you could eat it, 
the when later on. But be it ten. Hundred percent to ten without doing a bitul. So therefore, that's called davar sheyishlo matirim, something that has a heter that you do not need to anal. Davar sheyishlo matirim afilu belef lo baten. So therefore, even in a thousand, it's not going to be baten. The fact that you could wait until after next pesach, and after next pesach automatically this becomes yashan. I can't be mivatel it there right now. Why can't I be mivatel it there right now? Because you don't need to be mivatel it there right now. You could eat it after pesach without bitul. So therefore, it becomes davar. שיש לא מתינים. וכל דבר שיש לא מתינים, אפילו באלף לא בטל. So therefore, he comes and he says over here, the same thing. Here, right, it's a דבר שיש לא מתינים. Why? Because you don't need ביטול. Because even if you're going to come and you're going to say that, that if you're not going to be סומך on ביטול, you're going to say that maybe באמת everything is בשר חטאת טהור. Right? And therefore, give everything to a כהן. The כהן could eat everything. Right? Right now, you had one piece of basar chatat teora that comes and gets mixed up with a hundred pieces of basar of uh, basar chulin. Chulin is mundane. You are not a kohen. You want to eat it. How are you going to eat it? Only through bitul. One second. I don't need bitul. You know why I don't need bitul? If you give everything to a kohen, there is no need for bitul. The kohen is allowed to eat everything, even if it was basar chatat. So therefore, you want to do bitul and eat it. So the Rashi is from Give it to a kohen, and a kohen could eat it without bitul. So even in a thousand, you could not do a Everyone understood the, the, the concept? Fine. So now it says the Gemara as follows. It says the Gemara, This answer of Ravashi Bermet is not true. Why? Leman, who is this going like? If it's going to be to a Kohen, so therefore to the Kohen, it's going to be permitted even without Bitul, as we just mentioned before. But if it's going to be to Israel, it's always a soul. Which means, usually the concept of the Dvar Shei means is that right now for me it's a soul, but later on for me it's muta. That was the case that I told you about. Whether it's going to be Dvar Shei about the Pesach, that you just have to wait for the Chadash until the next Pesach, or for example Shabbat that I could eat it, but again I would have to wait for it. But that's for me. The same individual. Here, one is the Kohen, and one is a Yisrael. So if it's not the Vashri Shlomatirim, the Vashri Shlomatirim has to be for the same person, but just later on without Bitul. So Ela, the Ravashi Biduta, you're right. So therefore, Ravashi, it's, it's wrong. It's not correct. So Vesava Rabbi Yochanan, so Rabbi Yochanan, so says the Gemara, does Rabbi Yochanan come and he holds that Truma Bizman Zed do Raita? He says, Ratanya, we don't have Raita, Shte Kupot, if you have two baskets, one of them is of Huli, and one of them is of Truma. And in front of them, you have two seen, two se'ah. Se'ah is, again, it's like a, is a, is a measurement. One of them is chulin, and one of them is tumah. Now, you have, some of them fell into this one. Now, you don't know which one fell into which. So, one more time. You have two baskets, right? One of them is chulin, one of them is tumah. Then you have two little tiny jugs or whatever it is. One of them is chulin, one of them is tumah. One fell in one, one fell in the other. Now, you don't know if the truma fell into the truma and the huli fell into the huli or vice versa. You don't know what happened. So, says the Gemara, right? What happens? It's mutarim. Why? This is called something which we call toli. Toli is like a, an expression. I'm going to depend it. I'm going to make it dependent. So, I'm going to say why. I'm going to say, Shani Omer, truma letoch truma nafla. I'm going to say the truma fell into the truma and huli fell into the huli. So, you see from here, Right? The fact that I could come and I could say that probably it fell inside. So now one second. So that means I'm saying that it's not the right. It's not the, you know, it's man is the Doraita. Because usually we don't do, right, totally in the Doraita. So he says, he says, Rashakish, who should Abu Hulin ala Truma? That's only if you have more Hulin in the Truma. Rabbi Yochanan says, no, Abu Shalor Abu Hulin. Even if you don't have the majority of the Hulin on the Truma. So Bishrab al Shakish, I am Sanir Shakish, Kastavar, because he holds with Rabbanan. That even in the Rabbanan, you still need rov, which means you still need rov heter, the majority of heter. And that's why Rashaki said, you still need more huli than truma. But according to Rabbi Yochanan, you have a question. Because if you just told me now it's Doraita, since when do we come now and we say, right, tolling, right, in a Doraita? How, it's it's a fake Doraita. So fake Doraita is the Khumra. How do you say tolling? Imagine right now, you have two pots. One is meaty, one is milky. Then you have two cups. One is milk, 
right? And one is water, right? Somebody came, they poured both cups inside of each one. Now, you don't know if somebody poured the water into the meat or the water into the milk, right? And you don't know if they poured the milk into the milk or the milk into the meat. And if they pour the milk into the meat, it's the right thing. Now, I'm going to say, hi, oh, you know what? No, I'm going to say that they poured the water into the meat and the milk into the, into the milk. Well, you could just do that. <laughs> it's, so, it's so nice. You understand? I could just do that and that's it. So says the Gimana answers, Hamani, who is this? It's Rabbanan. This is Rabbanan. The Rabbanan hold the Truma Bismanase is only going to be Mid Rabbanan. Okay? Right? This is Pebeta Mubet now. 82B. The Anna de Amri Kirabi Yosef. We hold like Rabbi Yosef. What does that mean? Titania was learned to the right. The Seder Olam. This is in Seder Olam. When it says in Devarim, yeah, that he says over here that this one who is going to bring you to a land, right, which your forefathers have conquered, and you're going to inherit it. So there we're talking about two different kiddusha, two different kiddushim, and it says kiddushim. There's two different kiddushim. What does that mean? That means there's going to be twice that we're going to come and we're going to. Sanctify it itself. That was during the time of Yoshua bin Nun, right? Or let me tie with Oliva Ben. And during the time of Ezra Sofer, when he came up from the desert, from the from the captivity of Babylonia. But we don't need the Kiddush of the Shlishit. Why? Because once after, right, it's not going to be Batel the Kiddushat Aaret. So it comes out according to, <coughs> sorry, according to Seder Olam, the Chiyu Lafish Truma Bizmanazde. It's just like during when Beit Hamikdash was kiyam. So Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, "Who's the Tana of Seder Olam?" Rabbi Yosef. So therefore, it comes out of the machlok between Rabbi Yosef and Rabbanan. According to Rabbanan, the Truma is one that says the Rabbanan, and according to Rabbi Yosef, it's the Oraita. So says the Gemara. The Savar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbanan lo bayin Rabuya. We just brought down a machlok a few seconds ago between Rashatish and Rabbi Yochanan. By a Rabbanan, do you still need majority heter or not? So he said that according to Rabbi Shakish, yes, according to Yochanan, no. So says the Gemara, according to Rabbi Yochanan, in a Rabbanan, you don't need majority. But now we learn to the Mishnah Mikvaot. Mikveh, yes, for Abayim, Se'a, Mechubanot. Imagine right now you have a Mikveh. And the Mikveh has exactly Abayim Se'a. Right? Remember, Abayim Se'a is the measurements for a Mikveh. It has exactly. So what you did was you took, you put an extra se'a of a liquid. <coughs> Sorry. And then you took one away. It's still going to be kasher. So you have 40 se'a. I put one, so now it's 41, and then I took one. So now again it's 40. It's kasher. You could do this process until the majority of the mikveh. Yeah, that means I could add one, take one out, add one, take one out, add one, take one out, add one, take one out. Because remember, once you have 40 se'ah kasher, anything that you add on, right, is still going to be batel to the mikveh. You understand? So that's very important. So he says, so my lover, we're not talking about that you're allowed to do that, but you still have the majority left over, which is still kosher from the, the mikveh, the original mikveh. Says so the Gemara, no. Telon ishkol rubo. We're talking about that you cannot take the majority of the mikveh, right? So therefore, you could take put one and take one, take one uh, until you have 20, but not more than 20 se'ah. Because if, you, if you're going to do that more than 20 times, now you have the majority of the mikveh that wasn't mikveh water. You understand? Because you kept on adding one, taking one out, adding one, taking one out, adding one. But that means the original mikveh water is not there anymore. So you, you could do that until 20 se'ah. After 20 se'ah, it's a problem. The Baitim are you can answer. Shani Hacha, it's different over here by the Kupot. Shani Omer, because I could say Shani Omer. Shani Omer is a concept called Toli, which means by a mikveh, you can't say that, right? Why? Because since the Se'ah, which is coming and getting mixed up, right, is now going to become the role of Maim Shirim, it's different. Here I could say there was no Isur at all. What is Toli? Toli means I had two pots, one meat, one milk, and then I have a book okay, again, you know, but we were talking about the concept. And then you have also of the two different cups. When I'm going to say that this one fell into this one and this one fell into that one, it could come out that there was no problem. Now, by the way, this halakha is very, very common. 
right? There's an entire siman in Shulchan Aruch on this, right? Because, for example, sometimes it happens, you have the two pots on the thing, and you have the two covers. Now you put the wrong cover on the wrong pot, and you're not sure if it's or not. Or things like that. You know, so there's many cases like this which could come up. So tonight we learned, now we're going back to the next part where it says about the androvinos. Okay, we just finished this thing about the, the mikveh and the, with the rope. Now we're going back to the androvinos. Okay? Tanah, we learned it on Ishna. Androginos is allowed to get married to a woman. Right? No se. Right? Now, when it says the word no se, it's mashma that even mechatila you can get married to a woman. Right? Remember, the androginos has both male and female organs. Okay? Now, when it says no se, it means that he's allowed to get married lechatila. So says the Gemara, how can be no se? At the end of the day, it's a fact. What is it? See, male, female, he's got both. So therefore, what's going on? Yeah? So says the Gemara, Tani in Nasaisha. No, 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 you're right. It's not a din lechatila. Really, by male lechatila, this type of a person cannot get married. Why? Maybe it's a female. Maybe it's a male. You don't know what it is. It's got both. So therefore, you can't, he can't get married. But if he did get married, it has to be that he got married to a woman. Okay? So says the Gemara, the Hanul Sekhtani. What are you answering me now, the Shakish? Right? That we're talking about now, right? That, uh, how do you call it? That we're talking about now, right? In Nasa. It's written of the Mishnah. Don't change the Mishnah. So says the Gemara, and according to your reasoning, my Avalon Nisa. Right? What does it mean now, Avalon Nisa? Right? What does it mean there in the Mishnah when the Mishnah says that if he did not get married, so much like even with the Avad, the, the marriage is not mar- marriage if he gets married to a man. So no said that diavad. It's just like when the Sefer is talking about that if you got married to a man, they're using the terminology of diavad. So to hear when it's using terminology, it's starting to talk about the terminology of diavad, which means lechatchila. You cannot tell this under roginos to get married. Lechatchila, you cannot get married. But diavad, if he does get married, so this is the halacha. Okay. So says the Gemara. How many? No, no. No say is lechatchila mashma. But lo nisa is diavad nami lo. When it says no se, no se means a person is doing it. You're allowed to do it. So that is lechat When it says avalon when we're talking about that he cannot get married to a male, there it's talking about that even with the avad, it doesn't help. So therefore, it's a skila against a shrakish. So it says the Gemara, "Ha hamid itani seifa Rabbi Yezer Omer and Rabbi Nos Chayim la skila kizachar mikal the tarakam asul nusafkeli." One second. If you remember, we learned it, and this is what you guys were asking before. When an under Rabbi Nos comes and he has and he gets married to another male. There's skila for him. Why? Because it's like mishkav zachor. It's like a male with a male. So it's a mamash. Uh, it's uh, what's it called? It's skila. But it's mashma that Riyazi was the one that held that. But according to Tarakama, he has a doubt. Right? That's why he didn't say anything. So says the Gemara. No, ben lemor, ben lemor. Whether it's Riyazi or Tarakama, mishap shitale. Right? They're both. They're, for sure, it's like a zachar. It's when it's like a male. Ikabanal. The only difference is. Sekila mishne mekomot. Right? Which means, is there going to be sekila on both parts? Which means, more savar chayvim alav sekila mishne mekomot. Right? More holds, right? Which is a tarakama, that you're going to be chayav sekila because of the two different places, even if he has relations in the part of the female from him. Meaning, let's say this guy, this androginos, gets married to a male. And the male had relations with this androginos through his female genitals. So therefore, he still gets the kila according to the Tanakama. Or more savar, but according to Rabbi Yedder, he said that androginos is only due to the of the kila kezachar, only kezachar. <coughs> only through, like a zachar, which means that if he went and he, like mishkav zachar, has mishkav zachar, obviously, through the back part. So he says, but if it's going to be like, that he did it like through a female, so he's not going to be chayav, the kila. That is the shita of that means the difference between Rabbi Yezer and uh, Tanakama. The Amar Rav says, right, the Gimel Abu Dalif 83a on the top, let the Mitzitim come in Brayta. Where what are we going to push off the Mishnah because of the Brayta? The time was going to the Brayta. The Yosef Ben Adriyos would be able to that's mine. That the Ben Adriyos is another creature in itself. It's not a male. It's not a female. It's something completely different. Therefore, the, the Rabbis did not come and another decide whether it's a male or a female. And therefore, the Gemara is going to continue with obviously what is an Adriyos. Does that show me continue on Sunday?